Today I am bringing you two for one, two signs in one tutorial. Do you ever find it difficult to find signs and themes and room decor and party decor for little boys? I do and my client came to me this week and asked me if I could create this little car that you see here in um, on my computer screen as well as the sign that says too fast on the other side. I thought they were both so adorable. Um, I did not have any boards cut to this specific size. So I went to Hobby Lobby and I found two pieces of art that I will actually show you here in just a minute um, that had something completely different on them. They were dark brown wood and I painted them both in a light cream color called drop cloth it's kind of an off-white and just got rid of the motorcycles that were on them and I'll like I said I'll show you those in just a minute but um, let's move on into how I did the hand painted part that says too fast so I've got these slatted boards they've been painted in a base coat of drop cloth I chose stormy seas which is a beautiful bluish gray and I did not write out the words too fast I'm just using a paintbrush the uh, inspiration photo was very very uh, childlike and the way that it was written out it didn't have any perfect shape to it at all so I decided I wanted to do it just like that I am using my paintbrush here and just sort of going with my gut without looking at it ahead of time this is what I want to say when you write on a piece of paper or jot down a note real quick on a post-it note do you stand there and look at that paper or that post-it note really and say how do i want to write these words no you don't you just pick the pen up and the paper and you just write it down well that's what's fun about this type of artwork on signs with lettering and words is make it look as real and authentic as a message that you would write down on paper so just pick that paintbrush up and put the brush and the paint to the board and share your message that's it that's all you have to do and if for some reason you don't like the way it looks it's just paint let it dry you can either sand it off or just put another coat of paint over the top of it and you try again if it makes you more comfortable to do it in pencil first you can do that as well um, but you can also just pick up the paint and go for it so this here says too fast it's for a two-year-old little boy's birthday party and she'll be she will be hanging both of these signs as a backdrop for a photo opportunity station um, I thought that was such a cute idea and to be honest she's not even keeping these signs I'm actually going to be recycling these signs again um, and be and I'll be using them in the next couple of weeks for an order that I got for an upcoming little girl's baby nursery so I'll be getting to use these signs again okay so it is complete I'm doing a last minute little touch up here on some of the letters um, adding maybe in some areas that I thought the paint was a little bit too sheer just kind of cleaning up my lines a little bit but as you can see um, it was really really simple I'm very happy with it let's get it turned around here and give you a good look and you can also see the plank boards and how big they are but there it is too fast super easy and I did not have to build that board I got it on clearance I'll tell you about that in just a minute here we go these are the signs those are both of the signs i bought them for hot from hobby lobby they were on clearance 65 percent off i paid 13 dollars each for them one coat of paint covered the motorcycle and that was it so now i've got the second board prepped and ready to go this is my heat gun it's a heat gun a wagner heat gun i got it at my local home depot and i am just force drying my paint um, and I'm gonna start drawing here. Why am I showing you a candle? A candle in a mug. I am using this candle to trace and make my tire shape. So we're gonna draw the car now. I'm gonna take you through the process of drawing out the car. I've got my computer opened on the left side of the screen there. You'll be able to see the computer is open with the little car. I am not pre-measuring this. I'm not trying to make it perfect. I'm using unusual and odd things in my shop to draw out my circles you saw me using a mug there uh, to make the tires I'll use my short ruler here to connect the tires 
All right, so now I found like a little Dixie cup, um, a medicine cup. It happened to be behind me. It's what I use to mix my gold pigments in when I'm making gold paint. And I did the insides of my tires. I also decided to use it right up here at the top for the helmet. That's where the helmet will be. And you can see that I didn't even measure uh, where I wanted to put that helmet. I just stuck the helmet up there on the top, just drawing out with pencil the line around the back of the car. And then now taking this drag racer uh, top of the car down just using that inspiration photo again not measuring just as if I'm doodling on a pad that's all I'm doing okay so I'm using this coffee cup again for the center circle which is actually going to hold instead of a race car number it will hold the initials of the little boy that is having the party and I'm drawing out those initials inside the circle right now this is exactly why I love custom orders. I love personalizing things like adding an initial or an age or, you know, when I do my denim jackets and I get to put something really personal and put words on there. I just love that. So see his initials there in the center. Isn't that so cute? It is so adorable and it was so easy to draw. So now after I've drawn it out in pencil, I go ahead and I use a Sharpie marker and I go back over all of my pencil lines. You see me do this when I work on wood and when I work on fabric as well. This just sets my drawing, it sets my design, um, it keeps the pencil from smearing everywhere and it also works for a really nice outline that makes it really easy to paint and you don't have to worry about losing your pencil lines and not being able to see. It's a great painter's tip. If you're you know, drawing out a lot of art, I highly suggest you um, set your design with marker. Now, just because I'm setting my design with marker doesn't mean that I won't have to go back and re-outline afterwards. Sometimes I don't but sometimes I do. I just wait until I'm finished painting it and I decide if it needs a stronger outline or not and then I will come back and either re-outline with a Sharpie marker again on top of the paint. I even sometimes will use a paint pen and sometimes I'll use black paint with a tiny detail brush. It just depends um, on the look that I'm going for on that particular piece of art. All right, we've got that all drawn out and we are ready to paint and I am not gonna paint alone today. I've got a little sidekick here. This is Sophie. She is my oldest grandchild. She is 12 and she is visiting from Japan right now and she is painting in the shop with me. So we have started out by using um, a lighter color paint at the top of the at the top of the race car and then a darker colored paint at the bottom. I believe we've got dusty blue at the top and bunker hill blue at the bottom and I'm showing Sophie how to blend out that line so it doesn't look like a hard stripe and I want you to watch us do this. So we are reactivating both paint colors here. We've got light blue at the top, dark blue at the bottom. I've got a little bit of water that we spritzed on to the car here and then we each have a brush in our hand and we're just running that brush back and forth, back and forth across that line until it just sort of blurs that line out. I share lots of blending videos with you guys. A real easy blend is to, to blend two different colors together. So two different blues together. You see it's just working it back and forth. You continue to add a little bit of water and when it's done, you'll see that it isn't a hard line anymore. It will be nice and blurred out. If it doesn't blend the way you want it to and adding water isn't helping, you saw that Sophie added a little bit more dusty blue there to it and you can do that. Um, and then just keep running your brush side to side. Wipe off any excess on your hand or on a shop towel and just keep blending. See the nice blend that we're getting there? It's blurring it out instead of being such a hard dividing line. Okay, so now that the car blend is done, we're gonna work on the details, but we're also gonna add a checkerboard frame all the way around. So the mom is doing a lot of like racing flags, the black and white racing flags, and decorating with a lot of uh, race car type um, decorations. So we decided we would add that checkerboard, even though I usually use the checkerboard as more of a McKenzie Childs look, today it is going racing flag checkerboard. So I put Sophie on that job while I work on the car detail. She is using a ruler. She's just running it all the way around the edge and drawing a pencil line. This was a great job for her. And then she'll do two rows, one stacked on top of the other. Um, 
to make the checkerboard lines. So while she's doing that, I've got a small artist brush here in my hand and I am working on the details of the car. Right now I'm going to fill in the tires, I'm going to paint the helmet um, and the stripes on the front of the car and even the circle around the monogram. It was really, really nice having someone to help me and it was so nice to work with to work with my grandkid and get to see her sort of tap into her creativity. I don't get to see that much because she lives so far away. So this was a lot of fun for me. Okay, now do you see how Sophie has turned her ruler the opposite direction? So at first she was making the horizontal lines around the frame and now she's going back and making the vertical lines that go up and down through the horizontal lines. So now she's actually drawing off the checks and we just used the size of the ruler for both directions. And you can see if you look a little bit closer there, you can see um, the drawn out checks. Okay, do you remember me telling you a minute ago that sometimes I go back and outline again when I'm finished painting? So that's exactly what I'm doing right here, but I'm using a big fat broad tip oil-based paint marker and I am doing one last outline around every bit of the design on the little car. It just really helps your project to pop up off of whatever base you have it on. All right, so now I've moved out of the way and Sophie is wrapping up the last few checks. We're gonna count them out, make sure that we've got an even number um, all the way around so that we end up, you always wanna end up with an even number if you're moving around in a circle so that you don't end up with two black squares or two white squares being next to each other. So now we are moving on into painting the checks. I've never, ever had someone sit down and paint checks with me, so this was a, a big moment for me. Sophie was like, sure, I'll do it, G. So, uh, GG is what she calls me. So we're both using little artist brushes. Uh, they're about a quarter inch wide. I believe mine is a flat artist brush and she's using an angled artist brush. It just really depends on what your preference is. One does not necessarily work any better than the other. Now you could also, if you have trouble with paint and the paintbrush, you could also use that broad tip pen to fill these in as well. And there we go. This is on my shop floor, but don't they look amazing? I love them and I cannot wait to show you. Look at this. This is them at the party. It is such a great setup. Um, the signs looked amazing. It made a great photo backdrop. Thank you so much for being here today. Please like and subscribe for more. And we will be back next Sunday with another tutorial for you.